Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at section three of the game manual uh, for the Build Widgets Robotic Challenge. Um, we're gonna be looking at uh, section 3.1, which deals with the robot requirements, um, and section 3.2, which deals with the software and the controller requirements. So um, let's make sure that whenever you're using your game manual, um, that you're checking for the most recent version. Um, mine right now, um, at the recording of this uh, video, is version one, but it's possible in the weeks and months to come that TCEA releases um, future versions with updates um, to some of the rules. So um, while this is meant to help explain some of the rules and talk about what the rules mean, um, this video is not meant to replace the reading and the understanding of the most recent game manual. So um, that's gonna be your responsibility to check on and make sure that you understand that. Um, and so let's scroll down to section three and jump in um, to the content of this video. Here we go. So check section three, uh, 3.1 deals with the robot requirements. Um, this is the first year for TCA to really open things up and I'm super excited about this. Um, we're gonna open up this competition to more than just one platform. So Lego um, EV3, Lego Spike Prime, Robot Inventor, and Vex IQ are all platforms that we're going to um, allow teams to use to build and control the robot uh, for this year's robotics competition. Um, the, the, the qualification for that is um, we've listed those platforms and you need to use like the control module. Some people call that the brain, some people call that the brick, but the control module for that system along with its motors and sensors, okay? So the electronics package for each of those building systems that you um, have to use, that's where the limit is. Now it's opened up, there's no restrictions to adding on extra parts after that. So um, once you've built your robot, if you think you need to add a popsicle stick or a pipe cleaner or some rubber bands or some string or maybe even design and, and 3D print your own part or laser cut some extra parts on there, you can do that and you can add to it. There's no a restriction for the number or value of things you can do. That's just for you to take off and do um, as you need to make your robot as successful as possible. Um, now the limit to that is we don't want you to um, bend or glue or break or cut the, the pieces of that platform that, um, that you're using. So a 3.1.3 says basically um, you're not allowed to, to damage those parts. Um, a lot of times in most cases those belong to the school and those are not for you to break, bend, and glue or to damage because we want those avail available um, in future years to school, uh, to students um, at your school later on. So um, you can add to it, we just don't want you to, to damage parts that belong to that platform. Um, now, 3.1.4 says that your robot, as much as you wanna add onto it, it can't ex um, exceed the restriction of 12 inches by 12 inch footprint. So um, think about like a, when, when you set your robot down, just get a ruler, measure length, measure width on the, on the table, and then that's gonna be the footprint. If you can fit inside of there, you're gonna be good to go. Um, there's no requirement or restriction on height, so it, your robot can be as tall as it needs to be as long as it fits inside of these imaginary planes on the four sides of that. So you can't be like a tree and go up and then out because that's gonna be outside of the footprint, but as long as it fits inside of a 12 inch by 12 inch column or pillar, um, if you will, then you're gonna be good to go. Um, the robot, and here's, here's how we're gonna do that. Whenever we check for compliance at the beginning of the match, it's gonna be right before we start the match. And the referee's gonna have a ruler, he's gonna measure, measure, and then they're gonna tell you, oh, you're in compliance, or you're not in compliance. The robot has to hold itself together. And if it can do that during compliance and you can hit the button and start the match, then you're gonna be good to go. If not, um, the referee's gonna give you a chance to get your robot in compliance. And that might mean taking parts off or doing whatever it's gonna take to get your robot to start in compliance. Now that doesn't mean we're gonna check it and then you can add on things after that. No, it's gotta start with everything that you're gonna use um, at the beginning of the match. Now, once the match starts, if you want to remove parts, run your robot for a while, and then reattach them, it's possible that you can have, have things that are designed 
to come off and then put back on and then come off and put back on. But at the beginning of the match for the, compl the compliance check, everything's got to be on it, located um, for that compliance check and start the match. And once the match starts, then you can start um, adding and reconfiguring things. And if it exceeds that 12 inch uh, footprint, then that's fine. Um, as long as you've met compliance at the beginning of the match. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Um, next thing, um, I talked ab about attachments. That's probably going to be a big factor in this game because there's going to be a lot of different tasks that your robot can do, and it's possible that teams are going to want to build certain attachments that do one thing and then take those off and put something else on that does another thing. And like I said, all of those count as your robot at the beginning of the match. If a part becomes detached, then it's not part of your robot anymore. It's just like a random piece. So um, we, part of the rules say that if the robot returns to the safety zone, then you can pick it up, reconfigure it, and then put it back in the safe zone and, and let it go do its next mission, right? But if you've dropped a piece out in the game field, that's not part of your robot anymore, so you can't reach out and get it. Now, it's possible your robot could go bring back that detached part and then you can reattach it, but all of that has to be done according to the rules um, dealing with being or touching the robot touching the safety zone. So if the robot's touching the safety zone, you can reconfigure, add, subtract parts, but you can't do that if a part is out there detached on its own. You've lost, it's possible you just lost it and it's not, it's not part of your robot anymore. Um, Section 3.1.7 is starting to deal with some of the electronics um, and the control systems. There's going to be a 30 second autonomous period um, of your competition and then there's going to be a 90 second driver controlled period. So there's going to be some instances where you've pre-programmed or a, a program to run and you've um, another opportunity for you to drive, to do driver controlled section, where you actually have a controller in your hand and there's somebody on your team is driving that robot around and that's gonna be done using Bluetooth. So um, as, you, as you add those parts and get them connected and paired up via Bluetooth, we just, one of the requirements is you have to, to name that um, discoverable control module um, your name. So whenever you come to competition day, um, and there's these, all these Bluetooth connections that people can see on their, on their mobile devices. Um, they need to be identifiable, okay? Um, the other thing is, 3.1.8 says, you can't pair with somebody else's module. That's against the rules. So that's one of the reasons why we want you to name your stuff before you come um, and then pair with it before you come on competition day because you, like you know with Bluetooth devices, once something is paired, um, then it's, it's very difficult for someone else to pair to it. So you want to make sure that your connection is established before you come on competition day so no one else, either on purpose or accidentally, um, attempts to connect and pair um, themselves with your device. And so um, we're going we're gonna to be watching that very closely and um, there will be um, some consequences if you break uh, this rule that aren't going to be very nice. So let's jump ahead to this control um, and software um, section, which is 3.2 in the game manual. Um, this is going to be completely wide open for you guys. So if you choose to use, for example, um, Lego EV3 or uh, Vex IQ or Robot Inventor, um, those platforms usually come with their own software and um, their own ways to connect via Bluetooth, um, whether it's with a phone app or whether it's with a physical controller or a third party game controller or a laptop, there's a lot of different ways to connect um, other devices to um, those control modules and, we're, and program uh, for the autonomous period. We're leaving that up to you. So as long as you can figure something out and it works, then we're okay with that. We're not going to tell you exactly which ones you have to use or which ones you can't use. That's gonna be open to you. Um, um, and because of that, it's going to be your responsibility to make sure it works um, and not our responsibility to make sure you can get it to work. So um, you can use whatever you can figure out um, on the internet um, how to make it work. 
So there's, um, like I said, there's all op options for uh, programming uh, for the autonomous period, and then there's a lot of different options for each platform for connecting and for the driver control period, where you can drive your robot around and make the motors move and, and receive data from the sensors and stuff like that. So that's part of the contest of you figuring out um, what's available and figuring out how to make it work. Now, I will tell you, that um, it's gonna be um, in your best interest if you figure out a way to make it work really good for your platform that you're using to share that with other people. Um, in years past, there was a competitive advantage for you to keep some things secret. Um, and that gives you, if you know how to do something no one else does, that might give you a competitive advantage. In this case though, you're always going to be competing um, with an alliance partner. And it's probably likely gonna be an alliance partner from another school that you've never played with before. And so if you have, can figure something out that re works really well for either programming or for doing the driver controlled um, period, it's gonna be in your best interest to share that in some way with other teams because it may be a team that you end up playing with that can help you get points for your um, overall ranking score. So um, this competition is all about working with other teams rather than working against other teams, if that makes sense. So um, the TCEA discussion board on their website for robotics um, is probably gonna be the best way for you to share and for you to learn about these different pieces of software and control systems. So um, your sponsor will have access um, to that discussion board and you can ask questions there and you can also, and more importantly, share what you've learned um, how to do with other teams. Because like I said, when you show up on competition day, there's gonna be teams from other schools that you're going to be playing with and not necessarily against. So if you're playing with someone, you want them to have all the advantages um, that you have. And so um, sharing what you know is gonna be really um, a big deal in this competition because you're gonna be playing with people from other schools. Um, and that's gonna be, it's gonna be random. You won't know that until the day of competition. So it's gonna be very important for you to share what you know as early as possible um, with as many um, other teams as possible so that everybody can play their best game on competition day. So um, that's it for section three. If you have any questions, you can ask on the discussion board. That's probably the best thing to do. And of course, if you have any tips or tricks or things that you've learned or something that you want to share, please, please, please um, figure out a way to get that shared through your sponsor on that TCEA discussion board um, so as many teams as possible can get going with that um, and you'll have a lot of good teams to play with um, this competition season. So thanks for watching and I um, can't wait to see everyone on competition day. Um, I think you guys are going to blow us away with what you come up with and I can't wait to see it. So uh, good luck and I'll see you soon.